salutations, my fellow humans. And of course, if there are any aliens out there that may not be even carbon based, I don't know. Maybe you're listening too, somewhere in a distant galaxy. I just want to thank you. Thanks for taking time out of your day to listen to this. Now, if you're new to In the Shoes Of, then the whole goal of this podcast is to try and see life as much as possible from someone else's point of view. And at the very base of it, let's be honest, I really just want to engender more empathy, more understanding between one another, no matter where you at in your walk of life, what life, where, whether you're a doctor, a janitor, a, uh, an actor, a flight attendant, I don't, it doesn't matter. We all have our different points of view. We all see life uniquely. And especially during these times, I feel it's necessary for us to try and understand one another and love one another. As kind of cheesy as that may sound, I'm sorry, it's just, it's truth, right? Well, it's truth to me, and I hope for you too. Anyway, I'll get off my little soapbox and Let's move on to what's happening in this episode. This is part three of a mini series where I'm taking answers to the question that I usually ask, that I always ask at the end of the episodes. Well, most of the episodes anyway. I, uh, I try and get the guest to really think about their worldview, even kind of outside themselves a little bit. And so I bring an alien into the picture, and I have this alien who looks oftentimes like Benedict Cumberbatch ask the question, what does it mean to be human on Earth? What does life mean on Earth? How do humans interact? Essentially trying to get their worldview. And the answers I've gotten so far have been really cool. Now, because it's at the end of the episode, and because some of the episodes, like with Dr. Sherrod Paul, who is one of the, the guests in this episode, it took a long time. So not everybody I know probably got to the end. So I want to include his, in this episode, his answer and Shintaro Shimosawa's answer. I hope you enjoy it. And I hope your day is going stupendously. And even if it's not, if it's going rough, I hope you can take some deep breaths and be present and realize deeply that the present moment is all you ever have. That's taken from the book, The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle. And it's, to be honest with you, it's a fundamental truth. It's an axiom. It's, it makes sense. So be present, my friends, and enjoy this little mini episode. Thanks. Okay, time to move on to the final question. You have 10 minutes to describe to an alien how you perceive life on this planet. What would you tell this alien? How do you understand life here? As when you say life, do you mean life as in how was it to live or do you mean life forms? Basically to help the alien understand what are you people and how do you interact with one another? What are you hoping to achieve? It's actually a difficult one because I don't think we are headed in the right direction. Only from a point of view, I think that every sign is negative in our evolution now that we not only polarization, environment being destroyed, um, but not being intuitive about our, ourselves that if you fast forward, I think 50 years, there's going to be so much shortage of food and water and everything else that there's going to be wars like we're going to be like it's almost like we're going to come full circle so but to answer your question of the aliens is the first thing is to be honest if an alien came here because right through civilization wherever someone else has gone into another thing they've just crushed them so i i we can't assume that they're actually going to be friendly that they really want to know about us. <laughs> so, so, so we may be the Native Americans or the Australian Aborigines. We may end up in a, a reservation somewhere. We'll pretend that this is a friendly but curious alien. Another, That's it. Uh, I, I think the reason humanity endured is not for the reasons we think. So we didn't endure because of uh, 
wars and advancement will be endured because of nurturing one another. And, and I think that's why our genes are the nurturing genes. So if a child is nurtured at birth, it does better later on. If you're more generous, it's healthy for you. So I actually think the reason we were able to colonize, as I say in the book, is because we've actually looked after our communities. Whereas uh, if we were now, we're becoming individuals, which is more unnatural. So I think if you ask us, uh, what's our purpose? Is our purpose is to nurture everyone else on the planet, including our fellow people. But unfortunately, we have moved away from it into becoming so individualized that it's all I, me, myself, you know, stuff you kind of thing. And that's why I think, you know, I can't see this ending well only because we're running out of resources and that's it. So we're now, see the world could sustain 10 billion people. So the only way you'd sustain it is two ways. One way is everything will become chemical in the future. The other problem is we're not going to have enough food. So everyone's going to just pop a pill in the morning, which is what the IT guys like the Silicon Valley is proposing. You know, you get all the amino acids, you just pop one thing in the morning. But what I think is that's not humanity is about living life. And I just think we will become then like robots because you just pop a pill, give you enough energy, you just go and work for an IT company. I, just, I don't see that as life. What made us what we are is this creativity, everything else. But the biggest threat is our environment. And I, and I think it's quite scary because we are not intuitive. Because we can't sense, we, like we don't have antennae like cockroaches and other things who can sense what's happening around them. I mean, our environment is getting toxic but we can't see it. But because of it, we have a lot more illnesses, we have a lot more stuff. So they talk about big cities. There are like 75,000 preventable deaths in each of these big cities just from our environment. Yeah, just but from we, like the air Just from there, that's it. Yeah. But we're more and more and more, we're polluting it and we're still looking at it economically and saying, no, I'm going to bring back coal because I promise. But, but the fact is, that's gone. You know, you, that, you, know, you can't do it. Hey, but we don't, we're not intuitive. But I guess what is our purpose is really to nurture, whether it is our ideas, our children, our friends, because every time we don't nurture, it's actually, you know, because if you look at it, that's one of the things they say, you know, no war was ended by another war. At the end of the day, somebody had to talk and come to some sort of solution. So it's, it was always about a bit of give and take, a bit of nurturing. And I think that's what humanity is about. Because if an alien came, they may be in a different kind of a society where in the beginning we were like that. We were all single cell creatures which didn't have any links. The only reason we evolved is because we linked up. And then when we linked up, when we had, we could rationalize resources better. And then different parts said, okay, I'll do the, be the eyes of it, you be the butt and then you know it became creatures right so yeah. and and it's the same with the world you know with different paths for different things but we, we don't have that wholeness of purpose well i definitely hope that we don't come full circle yeah yeah but you know i, I must say all the science scientifically look more and more we're disregarding the science behind it we more and more we don't see what's happening so let me get to the last question here. And it's kind of a, I'm going to set the stage a little bit. So let's imagine that you're strolling through Manhattan on a clear day when suddenly a Firefly-esque spacecraft appears and out steps an alien who mm -hmm. looks remarkably like Harrison Ford. Now, for some reason, nobody finds this unusual. You are in Manhattan, after all. And the alien proceeds to ask you some questions. So after you explain where to find the best pizza and how to use Twitter to reach out to Val Kilmer, you know, things like that, the Harrison lookalike gets real with you. He lets you know that he's been sent on an intergalactic journalistic mission to find out not only the top things to do on planet Earth, but to ascertain how you see and understand life on this planet. And you have about, I don't know, five to ten minutes and he has a lie detector. You can't lie. You have to just be straight up honest with them. What would you tell this alien? You represent the human race here. Wow, this is a lot of responsibility. You know, it's interesting because, like, if you ask a writer this, they'll they'll be able to tell you what their hero of their story would say. They would be able to embrace those great things about humankind and and some of the pratfalls in a very elegant, 
and eloquent way. If he asked me, I would be like, holy fuck, I don't know, man. <laughs> like, people are complicated. You know, people, people are loving and they also backstab each other. I mean, it's going to sound like a lot of hypocrisies. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to sound like a lot of conflicting ideas because, you know, with every good thing, there's also a bad side to it. I mean, he, when you talk about what makes Earth so special or what makes mankind so special, there's always the good and the bad and there's always the, the darkness and the light. And I guess that's what keeps it interesting for us. And that's what keeps storytelling interesting. But on the reels, if if an alien were to say, "I'm bringing this back to my people," and they're gonna they're gonna <laughs> make a decision on whether to attack you guys or how to attack you guys, I mean, you know, and and I, and he has a lie detector test, and I was honest, I, I don't know if they would walk away with the most clear idea from <laughs> me, in particular. I appreciate the honesty, though. So, what what if he asked you to elaborate on what, like, what do you mean when you say that uh, the darkness and light? Maybe that's a for a little bit of a foreign concept to him. I guess when when you leave people to their own de devices and they're completely autonomous, humans will have a tendency to, for every good thing that they do, may end up doing something bad, or may have the inclination to do something bad, and that is kind of a bummer. But that is that is what happens. So that's what I mean by light and dark. There's people that spend their whole lives going to the light and then they'll, they'll have a mishap and they'll dip their toe into the dark. Or there's people that just sprint straight for the dark yeah, and they don't right. they, they understand what light is, but they just don't go to it. Yeah. Do you think in what if he asked you one last question from the alien, then he has to go get that pizza that you recommended? He asks you, so are there... It would be artichoke. It would be arti oh, artichoke. Oh, okay. Yeah, Excellent. Yeah. I, I love that. <laughs> Margarita's... There you the go. So what if he then asks you, so do you believe that there are more people heading toward the light here on, on the planet or more people heading toward the dark? Or is it a, just a mishmash? I'm an optimist. I would explain that to him first and foremost. I'd say that I think about 80% want to go towards the light. I agree with you, man. Especially after after traveling through, I don't know, whatever nation it is, I find that most people just want to do good by, uh, you know, their friends and family and those around them in their communities. So I, I yeah, I'm too, I'm an optimist. Yeah, I mean, so, yeah. yeah, and one of the one of the hard things is when you watch people do horrible things on television, in the news and in fictional TV, it's it does mess you up a little bit. You're like, wow, there's a lot of darkness in the world. However. You know, the reality is like I, I was on a spinoff for a show called Criminal Minds and um, they, they have a serial killer every week and there really isn't that many serial killers in the world. But the ones that we do know about, we want that information voraciously because we were afraid for our own safety, our children's safety. Um, but the reality is there's not many. Right. <laughs> so, you know, the, for the most part, there's very good people in the world. And for the for the select few, there's some really bad. Yeah. And the really bad get. Uh, quite a bit of attention, unfortunately. Yeah, no, 100%. Totally. Hey, thank you so much for checking out this episode of In the Shoes Of. If you like or don't like the podcast, feel free to leave a review or reach out to me. My email is jnickel42 at gmail.com. I can't promise you I'll get back to you right away, but I'll definitely try and get to it. Anyway, thank you so much for checking it out. Until the next time, see you later. <laughs>